Good morning out there, in there, out there, from in here, out here, or over there, or somewhere. Ah. Hi, Mark. And a big happy birthday to Elizabeth. That's our niece. And we love her to bits. Um, it's amazing. She has two 15-year-old twins, boy and a girl, and it's Elizabeth's birthday. She calls me Uncle Booga ever since she was little. And she'd say things like, let's run. Okay. And comfort, comfort to Kristen, family. Been a grief week. You have grief week, then you you really look for those things to uh, give you some comfort. You like Carrie Newm, newcomer, the singer. Ooh. Really like her. We're reading uh, in this book group. Uh, a book by Parker Palmer called um, At the Brink of Everything. And there's so much intelligence in that room. Wow. It's... And so we meet this afternoon. That tells you how old the group is since we meet at three. Um, but then we can go around twice and say the same thing because we didn't remember what we said the first time. <laughs> Parker Palmer came to Hope he made no uh, boy he was so good about his book The Courage to Teach didn't have effect on anything that's what I watched for a long time there Addie Whitehouse was in my first class 1971 and she's up for the Chicago Writers Best Indie Book of the Year from her Dana Demeter series. I hope I pronounced that right. I've never asked her how you pronounced it. Maybe it's Demeter, but I think it's Demeter. Check it out. It's a mystery series. It's up for Best Indie Book of the Year. Chicago Writers. That's a big deal. So here's to Addie after all those years ago and she wrote to me about sticking with it sticking with it all the way 1971 first class I ever had they were so good that I didn't show up one day they had class anyway they loved the book and talking about the book I forget which book it was maybe God bless you Mr. Rosewater or something like that Vonnegut they were 18 yeah, let's see what else we have. Oh, my goodness. I love our walks with Vivi. She's, oh, look who's here. Come on up. Want to hop up? You ate your chewy. Oh, you're going to go over there? Okay. We'll let her pass. There she goes. All right. She's not real good with narrow spaces. We have these beautiful walks, though. And then she goes into the woods, and it's hilarious with my... Uh, Neuropathy because I have to keep my balance and and it's dark out in the morning and we had a fun time this morning we really did because I was trying to hold the trees so I could look at my feet as she was sniffing because you know you have to find the right spot you have to find the right spot yeah mm -hmm. and boy it's just darker darker in the morning isn't it have you guys had this big wind stuff? We've been we've been hurled around for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. My workshop last night, every time we have this workshop with these 12 wonderful people, and I always say the thing is, there's so much intelligence there that it's like when Jefferson dined alone. <laughs> Oh my, intelligence, warmth, kindness, insight into their one another's poems, 
that are different from one another, observations, one person sees this, another sees that. I sit there and just listen and listen. I told them last night, it was interesting, I, I wrote down all the things that I thought might be important for uh, to talk about, that might be valuable is more important, valuable to them. They covered them before I brought them up. <laughs> Man, it's just remarkable. One, one dear person at the end was, all, well, all of them, several were, all but in tears at how wonderful that time is. You just don't get to do that. The thing about poetry that's very different and hard because it's so not well taught is that there's no other means of expression that can express what it does. There is no other one. A song can come close, uh, and if it's Dylan and he does a, you know, a seven minute song, it can come close. But nothing else can really do it. Every single part of a poem has a, a, uh, an impact, everything. And it just makes it so rich. And I'm not, this isn't salesmanship, because I know, as James Wright said, in America, you've wasted your life if you spend it with poetry. But it, that is what it is, not what it's taught. Read the whole poem and narrow it down to what it means. That's, that's not what it is. It's what it's doing and what it's leading one to realize and see. And, and there's no other way. You can try to express yourself some other way, but you know what it's like to try to say something important or, uh, personally or non-personally to somebody else. And now we stagger in conversation. We just can't get there. And then we just lose it. <laughs> I do. Um, did I say Vivi and I love our walks? We love our walks. And some of the people we can or let us walk through their yards and so that's very pleasant. Feel like you're in the neighborhood. Some people don't, but some people do. Let's put the do on the do. Let's put that there. Um Oh, and at yoga yesterday. This might be useful to you. She was so wonderful. She said Okay, I have to come out and say it. You should not fall for anything that has to do with self-help. <laughs> Isn't that great? Shelves and shelves of self-help. And I know some self-help writers, and I apologize. But what she meant was, she put two things, uh, two uh, uh, descriptions on this whiteboard. One was a circle, and she filled it up with all these... Uh, feeling experiences. Grief, which we've had. Grief, joy. By the way, we raised our daughter to make grief and joy always together with her. When she was little, we just said, well, you're always going to have sad with you and you're always going to have joy with you, so don't don't think one's going to go away. It's especially joy. Grief's not going to go away. Even when you're little, you lose your teddy bear. Grief. Anyway, um, she made that circle. She said, that's yoga. That's yoga's thing of what it's like to be human, and you hold all those. And uh, I remember Mary, poet Mary Ruffel saying before a reading that she was all mixed up. And then she said, I don't mean by that confused. I mean by that blenderized. And then our teacher over here put this list of let's call them positive, for lack of a better word, feelings, you know, happiness, pleasure, blah, 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 blah. Bunch over here, and then she drew a line, she put all these other ones that are labeled negative, grief, anger, uh, that, fear, okay? And she said, this is, self-help tries to make these go away so you can have these. Don't, don't fall for that. This is what we are. We can't do that. You can't. You just can't do that. It was kind of a release. Everybody in class just went, whew, you know? Yeah. 
doesn't mean it's the greatest thing to be a human being, because I don't think it is. I think it's terribly hard to be a human being. I think it's overwhelmingly hard. It's much easier to be a grasshopper. Much easier. Halloween decorations around the house. Julie's father's. Oh, they're just wonderful. Those old, I don't know, are they paper mache? They're just these wonderful and these cardboard things and they're, they're from that, you know, mm -hmm. long ago. And I just love them. And then we have these little really scary figures that when you look at them, they look like they're friendly. <laughs> I don't know how they made those. They're just, they're wonderful to be with. Wonderful to be with. Well, again, happy birthday to Elizabeth and comfort to Kristen. And I have a little poem. I'm still reading Frank McCourt. Don't like the part I'm reading now. It's, uh, hmm. But we'll get past it and on to something else. Look what I picked up, my notes. <laughs> It must be early. No, I'm old. Here's the poem. You know, most poets say, I don't like my the poems I'm written, I've written. I look back at them and I just, and you know, I, I like them. And maybe I like them or think they're, maybe I've lost something along the way. So this is, uh, you know, this is from a, a, a first book, which is a uh, long time ago. And it's a quote by William Stafford. I'm kind of overdoing Stafford, aren't I? And his quote is, the title is a quote from William Stafford, No harm in being quiet. No harm in being quiet. At the beach, I listen to an outboard, to the lake's waves. Overhead, the large silence of the sky. Where are my shoes? cries a child. And a young mother pulls them from the water. I used to talk a lot. Now, I can seldom think of how to carry on a normal conversation. What's wrong with him? Maybe this is just a long pause as I wait for some new words. Words that will float above the waves, mix with the air, cling like a kite string to a single cloud. Take care, be kind, try to be cheerful. And so many of you, thanks. You've let me know that you watch, and I feel like I'm with you. <laughs>